10 p.m. BULOVA, Bulova Watch Time. For supreme accuracy, expert design, and outstanding value, choose a Bulova. Masterpiece of fine watchmaking. WEAF, New York. <whistles> Lever Brothers, makers of Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso, presents Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Step on it, Steve. I got my foot on the floor now. We gotta do something, then we'll never lose that car that's chasing us. Don't talk. Lean out and see if they can hit a tire. Okay. Well? Missed. Hey, hey, watch that curve. I'll take care of the driving. Try it again. Uh, well, try and hold this bus steady, will you? I'm doing the best I can. I've been fighting this wheel for 20 minutes. Now, after I swing around that next curve, I'll slow up. Try and get that tire again. Okay. Here goes. I got her. I got her, Steve. She's heading right for the telegraph pole. What a crack up. Them plainclothes cops in that car ain't gonna interrupt another one of our hijacked jobs. Plainclothes cops? Those ain't no cops. The driver of the car that just wrapped around a telegraph pole is Boston Blackie. In a moment, we'll meet Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. But first, a fashion note for summer. The spotlight is certainly on cotton, and that's not just my idea. I was looking through a couple of those fancy fashion magazines, and every page had something about crisp, colorful cotton dresses, cotton evening things, daytime dresses, and so on. Well, speaking from the man's point of view, I'm for it. Those printed cottons are certainly mighty pretty. And speaking from the soapy rich Rinso's point of view, it's easy as a breeze to keep them crisp and colorful. Rinso's rich suds are gentle and safe for washable colors, Leave their bright colors gay and sparkling week after week. And it's so easy to do a rinse wash, a short soaking, a few quick finger rubs on extra soil places, and your clothes are ready to rinse. Really rinse white and rinse bright, too. So, next wash day, be sure you have rinse on hand to give you a hand. And now, here is Chester Morris as Boston Blackie. <laughs> Tell me, Blackie, uh, how does your wrist feel, huh? Oh, just a slight sprain, Shorty. But we're lucky. We might have been killed when those thugs got our front tire last night. <laughs> I thought for a moment we were killed. Hey, Blackie, let's stay up here in your apartment and mind our own business for a while, huh? huh? At least until I get over that shaken up I got you. Well, we know. weren't looking for trouble. We were just driving along and... Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Always that and. <laughs> That's what gets us into more jam. All right, so we went for a drive. Nothing unusual in that? No, but why'd you have to notice that big sedan was parked right in front of a truck and two guys were holding up the driver? Well, I always feel sorry for the guy on the other end of a gun. Yeah, but listen, boy. If you want <laughs> to listen to... Uh, you too, shorty. Up high, way up. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. I cover, Mike. Okay. So the crack-up didn't kill you guys, huh? The boss sent us to find out. You have more lives than a cat, Blackie. Yes, I've got ten. And that means you rats better look out. <laughs> hey, hey, that's good. Huh? <laughs> Blackie, it's a wonderful shorty. Uh, say, what are you mugs doing here? The boss didn't like the idea of you in a film with that hijack job last night. Oh, well, I don't like the idea of having my car wrecked either, Stooge. We well, ain't interested in what you like. We got a pretty good setup, Blackie. Well, I'm so glad. That's fine. Yeah, we got a lot of meat tied up, and we're getting good prices for it. Well, what do you want me to see me about? What? What's the catch? The boss wants to know if you want in on the racket. What? Yeah. See, he don't want no more interference from you. That's the catch. Oh, black market, huh? Well, if I say no, what does the boss say? He says we should give you a little treatment. Oh, and by the way, who is your boss? Hmm. Never mind. Well, how do I know your boss is a reasonable guy? Hey, where you going? Now, don't be scared, Stooge. You know, I always talk when I'm thinking. After all, you're the one that's got the gun. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, boys, I've finished thinking. I guess I have no choice, huh? Well, tell the boss I'll go along with him. <laughs> uh, now you're talking sense. Yeah, well, I guess that makes us partners, huh, boys? Uh, say, how about a little drink on that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a snort. Fine. I, I'm sorry. All I've got is bourbon. That's okay with me. Uh-huh. With, uh, with soda? Yeah, yeah. Well, come on, boys. I'll build you a couple. 
Say when, Steve. When? Look, uh, I gotta hold this gun on you, Blackie. It ain't that I'm uh, impolite. It's uh, just that I'm careful. <laughs> you flatter me. How much soda? Gee, I never had it with soda before. Really? You haven't? Well, you're going to get it. Well, hey, all right, give it on. All right, Shorty, I'll take care of this one. <laughs> okay, boss. Okay, I got his gun. Why, you... Why, take it easy, Steve. Now, cut out the nonsense. I've got your gun. Now, be a good boy. You wanted an answer for your boss, huh? Well, you have it. Now, get out of here. And in the future, boys, remember, never drink during business hours. Say, boss, did you know that it was 103 in needles yesterday? That's an enlightening breakfast conversation, Shorty. Thanks. Never mind, I'll get it. Boston Blackie? That's right. I'm sorry to disturb you so early in the morning. Well, uh, won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Shorty, another cup of coffee for Miss, um, uh... Parker. June Parker. Well, Miss Parker, you're a charming eye-opener for so early in the morning. Boston Blackie, I need your help. And I'm glad to know you, too. As a matter of fact, you've already helped me. I have? Mm Mm-hmm. My driver tells me you helped one of my trucks get through the other night. One of your trucks? Yes. Well, uh, I, I don't quite understand. <laughs> this may sound a little strange to you, but I have a ranch and I raise stock. Yes? Yeah. I've sold a lot of cattle, only I can't deliver it to my customers. Oh, I see. And, and your trucks are being hijacked by that black market gang, huh? Yes. That's why I came to you. Will you help me get them through? <laughs> you know, that's the second offer to go in the meat business that I've had in the last 24 hours. Why don't you go to the police, Miss Parker? I'm sure Inspector Faraday would be glad to give you protection. I've gone to the police, but my trucks still aren't getting through. Oh, you're really in a jam. Uh, Those black market thugs are worse than any racketeers we've ever had in this country. I've been offered any amount if I'd fell to the black market. But I won't, not for anything. Of course you won't. Then you'll help me? Now, look, Miss Parker, it isn't only helping you, it's helping me. It's helping everybody. The black market is one of the biggest things we've ever been up against. And you're fighting that black market. You know, you're the kind of a girl who's helping win this war. Uh, coffee's ready, boss. Forget the coffee, Shorty. We've got a job to do. The biggest job we've ever done. That's you, Matthew? Yes, Inspector. Yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Got to finish writing this letter. Hey, Matthews, how do you spell stupidity? Um, F-A-R-A-D-A-Y. F-A-R-A-D-A-Y. Oh, it's you, Blackie. <laughs> I should have known. Matthews can't spell. All right, what do you want here? I don't know. What have you got here? One of these days, we're going to have you here in a cell. <laughs> Faraday, you're nothing but an idealist. <laughs> you know, I've been lonely. Uh... You haven't been bothering me lately. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you love me anymore? I love you anymore. I love you like <laughs> poison ivy. What do you want, Blackie? Well, Faraday, my life has been threatened. Oh. I want police protection. <laughs> You're wonderful. <laughs> you want police protection, Blackie. Stop now, it. wait a minute, Faraday. I'm serious. <laughs> There's a gang after me, and they're not fooling. <laughs> Poor little Blackie. I'd like to see the gang that you couldn't handle. What is this, a gag? No, 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 wait a minute. I'm on the level. <laughs> Blackie, you're breaking my heart. You've never been on the level with me in your life, so why should I start believing you now? Oh. Oh, so you won't give me police protection, huh? Don't make me laugh. Okay, Faraday. That's all I wanted to know. Blackie wants protection. <laughs> no! Got him, Mike. Let me get him into the car. Come on. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Boston Blackie's going for a long trip. Well, it looks as though Boston Blackie's in a pretty tight spot, but Blackie is also a pretty resourceful individual, so just wait and see what happens. You know, we used to have a nice hand-embroidered motto hung up on our wall that said, true friends are like diamonds, precious and rare. How well that applies in wartime to the washing machine. Yes, ma'am, if you're lucky enough to have a washer, keep in mind that it's your true friend and take care of it. 
One way is to follow the advice of the makers of 33 leading washers and use Rinso. You see, Soapy Rich Rinso gets out more dirt. And with such a short run, it's easy not only on your clothes, but on your washer. And Rinso results are something to see. All your white clothes gleaming, sparkling. Sure, Rinso white. And colors washable, Rinso bright. So be sure to put Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, right on top of tomorrow's shopping list. And now, back to Chester Morris as Boston Blackie. Well, Boston Blackie, intent on breaking up a black market meat ring, was waylaid by thugs as he was leaving police headquarters where Inspector Faraday had just refused him police protection. Blackie has been thrown into a car. Hey, Steve, he's coming too. Must be this country air. Stop the car. Okay. Let's get this over with. Yeah, I'll take the gag out of his mouth. Yeah, nobody can hear him out here. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I want to get my necktie back anyway. The best one I got. My girl gave it to me. She's a redhead. <laughs> Says it matches her hair. <laughs> you know, it's too bad she ain't a brunette. Yeah, you just don't like redheads. Hey, never mind putting on your tie now. Leave it there in the seat and let's get this job over with. Come on, Blackie. Can you talk? Well, what is this, the end of the line? No. This is where we transfer. Okay, boys. What's the score? Two to nothing, and you're the nothing. <laughs> Blackie, can you stand up? Well, I, I'm not so sure. Well, you better stand up while you can, Blackie. You're going to be laying down for a long time. You have a charming sense of humor. You had a chance to join up with us, Blackie. You nixed it, and now you're getting rubbed out. Oh, boss's orders, huh? Yeah, and besides, it gives us a chance to get even for that soda trick yesterday. I see. Get over that fence, Blackie. Oh. <laughs> Say, what is this, an obstacle course? Yeah, and you're the obstacle. Hey, mm. Steve. Hey, what's that over there? Huh? Uh, nothing. It's just a cow. <laughs> that happens to be the cow's husband, gentlemen. Gee, a bull. Hey, if a bull sees red, he goes crazy. <laughs> what's the matter? You scared, Mike? Now we got to finish our job. Okay, Blackie, anything you want to say? Any uh, last request? Well, um, well, I'd like to start running, gentlemen, if you don't mind, and I'm sure you would, too. What? Uh, that bull's coming this way, and fast. Hey, uh, hey, he's after me. Hey, hey, he's after me. Hey. Thanks for the gun, Steve. Hey, let's get out of here, will you? Don't worry, Steve. The bull's after Mike. You see, I stuck his own red necktie in his back pocket. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, it's me, June. Boston Blackie. Oh, Blackie, just a minute. Well, please come in. I'm glad to see you, Blackie. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like some information, June. These gents we're up against are playing a little rough. Oh, Blackie, what happened? Well, I went to Faraday for protection. He didn't believe I needed it. Next thing I knew, I was tapped on the head and ended up in a cow pasture playing matador. Blackie. Now, look, June, all I want to know is just one thing. You told me that somebody tried to get you to sell your cattle to the black market ring. I want to know who that somebody is. Well, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't know. Well, if you're being afraid, don't be. I'll see that nothing happens to you. And it's also a little bit important that nothing happens to me, too. Now, look, all I want to know is who approached you on that black market deal? Well, some men who said they represented a Mr. George Williams... Williams? Well, who's he? I don't know him. He has a wholesale meat plant on Johnson Street. Yes. But Blackie, I, I, I've never seen him. Shh. Quiet, June. What's the matter? The doorknob. It's turning. Oh. Now, I'll be in back of the door when it opens, but you keep on talking. Okay. Uh, but Blackie, I... Oh, I don't know whether I can go to dinner with you or not. I, uh... Oh. Okay, drop those guns. Pardon now, drop me. them fast. I'm right here in back of you. Better drop your gun, too, Steve. Well, you two matadors again, huh? <laughs> this is getting a little monotonous. How far did that bull chase you this morning? Um... I'm a little fed up with you two guys. Uh, June. Yes, Blackie? Take the cord off those drapes. I want to tie up these two bullfighters. Then I've got to go over and see a man by the name of George Williams. But Blackie, I, I'm afraid well, you I... You don't have to be afraid, June. Oh, when Blackie ties them up, they stay tied. And when I get through with this, you'd better call the police and have them pick up these mugs. Um... And i got to work fast. Hey, Miss Parker, you ain't going to call no police. What? What do you mean? And besides, you're going to untie us right now. Or else 
the boss won't like it. You, you mean Mr. Williams? <laughs> no, Miss Park. You see, uh, Williams ain't his name. His real name is Parker. <laughs> Parker, yeah. George Parker, your brother. <laughs> now, will you untie our hands? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Blackie. I operate a legitimate business here. I sell only at ceiling prices. I came up here to tell you I'm tired of being kicked around by those two mugs of yours. And also that you're going to lay off June Parker. June Parker? Who's she? Well, she's the girl you've been threatening. You know, the one that owns the trucks you've been hijacking. But you won't do it anymore. You see, I'm taking you with me. You're taking me with you? That's right. You're going to be my insurance that from now on, this black market gang of yours is unemployed. What are you going to do with me? What's he going to do with you? He ain't going to do anything with you. Faraday, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Inspector, my secretary had the good sense to call you. And I'm glad you got here so fast. Mm -hmm. What's Boston Blackie been up to now? He held me here in my office at the point of a gun, Inspector. (laughs) He was going to force me to go with him unless... Unless what? Unless I stopped selling meat at ceiling prices and went into the black market. Now, wait a minute, Faraday. That's ridiculous. You know that can't be right. I don't know nothing. Oh, you know a thing or two. You're just being modest. I'm a reputable merchant, Inspector. (laughs) I've been in business for years. This blacky person wanted me to make this plant his headquarters for illegal meat sales. Now, Faraday, listen. He claims I pulled a gun on him. I don't even have a gun. It was in his hand when you came in the door, Inspector. With Blackie, that don't make any difference. He can make anything disappear. Thanks. Someday, I hope he goes to work on himself. This Williams is head of a black market ring. Oh. That's not true. Not only that, but he's got a couple of thugs that have an obsession about my collecting old age pensions. That's ridiculous. Oh, Please take Blackie with you, Inspector. I'll prefer charges. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. <laughs> I know I've tricked you, and we've been playing hide-and-go-seek for years. Go on. But I've never gone back on my word, now, have I? That's right. And I'm not going to try any tricks. <laughs> I just want you to come with me to a young lady's apartment. Oh, now, Now, Black- really, I-, I want you to meet two friends of Mr. Williams. Mm. And if I can't prove that my story is true, well, I'll... I'll go downtown with you. Now, nothing could be fairer than that. Mm, yeah, sounds all right. But then you can make anything sound okay. You want me to see a gal who'll set me right on this whole thing? That's right. Okay, Blackie. I'll give you a chance to square yourself, but remember, this better not be a runaround. This is the apartment, Inspector. Come on in. Who is it? Oh, it's me, June. It's his Blackie. I'm here with Inspector Faraday. Hmm? Who? Inspector Faraday. Wait a minute. I'm coming. Well, hello. Hello, mm-hmm. June. Uh, would you mind telling the inspector about that black market ring that threatened you? What black market ring? Well, you know that the... <laughs> June. I'm Miss Parker. And who are you? That's all, Blackie. I've heard enough. June. Now, what happened to those two men I left tied up here at your apartment? Inspector, who is this man? Don't you know? He says he's a very dear friend of yours. Why, I've never seen him before in my life. (laughs) And now, will you excuse me, please? Okay, Blackie. We made a deal. This gal who was supposed to explain everything claims she never saw you before. Come on, let's go. Now, I can't go with you, Inspector. I've I've got to find out what this is all about. Sorry, Blackie. Figure it out while you're waiting trial. Faraday, will you listen? This girl is lying, and I can prove it. If you give me time. Give you... I'll give you time, Blackie. You're coming with me. And keep your hands where I can see them. Now, come on over here to the telephone. I'm going to get you an escort downtown. Okay, Inspector, but you're making a great mistake. According to you, I always make them. So what's the difference? Remember, Blackie, I'm keeping my eye and my gun on you. Get me police headquarters. Blackie, stop playing with that telephone cord. You make me nervous. I'm not playing with it, Inspector. Get get that wire off my gun, Blackie. Hey, stop the twisting that gun. You're breaking my wrist. Sorry, Inspector. Now let go of the gun. You're going back on your word. Yeah, that's better. You're going back on your word now. You never did that before. I'm sorry, but I've got to be free to get the head of that black market ring and put a ring right through his nose. Shorty? Hey, open up, will you, boss? Wait a minute. Come in, Shorty. Well, I... Oh. 
Oh, what are you doing here? Uh, she made me bring her down here to your waterfront hideout, boss. Well, that's fine. What do you mean she made you? She came to the apartment and she was crying. Oh. Boss, you know I can't stand to see a poor dame cry. Blackie, you've got to listen to me. Yeah. Yeah, I listened to you once. I know. I lied to Inspector Faraday, but I had to. Well, that's fine. Why don't you tell it to Faraday? I can't tell Inspector Faraday I lied. I can't. You can't do this. You can't do that. You sound like the Summer Sisters. Uh, why did you make Shorty bring you down here? So that I could beg you to please forget all about me and the black market ring. Oh, well, forgetting about you will be a pleasure. I don't blame you for feeling that way. But believe me, it's for the good of everyone for you to forget about all this. Believe you? <laughs> Are you kidding? You almost did once. Yeah, I almost died once, too. And I've no desire to try that again, either. You wanted to help me when I was in trouble, Blackie. I'm still in trouble. But the only way you can help me now is to drop this whole black market case. Mm hmm and you're the girl I thought was going to help win the war. Oh, Maggie, please. <laughs> June, there's no point in your coming here to see me. But, George, I didn't even know you were here in the city. And then to find out what you're doing... How in the world did you ever get started on Just this? Just why should I explain that to you, Jim? I can't understand you. And Dad couldn't either. When you ran away from the ranch five years ago, you broke Dad's heart. And not, not hearing from you after that didn't help any. I don't see why you should complain. Dad left the ranch to you, didn't he? Yes, but what else could he do? But it's worked out all right anyway. You've done a good job, Joan, raising good cattle. That's helped me in my business. But black market, George... You call that a business? I don't go for those names. All I know is I'm making money. And incidentally, Joan, it wasn't in my plans that you should know who I am. And it's your own fault that you do. You got mixed up with this Boston Blackie and I had something to do about it. Well, well, this is convenient, finding the two of you here together. Boston Blackie. Blackie. Well, now who wants to talk first? You, Williams? I got nothing to say to you, Boston Blackie. Oh, I see. How about you, June? I I can't tell you anything. Well, let me tell you then. Williams, you ought to pick smarter stooges. Or I might say you ought to pick a dumb stooge, one who can't talk. You see, uh, Steve talked. With a little persuasion, of course, but he talked. So, Williams, I know that you're really Parker, June's brother. But, Blackie, I... And June, I that explains a great deal, too. Of course, you made Faraday very happy by pretending not to know me, but you didn't make me very happy. Oh, please, Blackie, you've got to listen to me. Look, I didn't know that my brother was going under the name of Williams. And when I found out, I was so stunned. I, I didn't know what to do. Except I knew I couldn't turn him over to the police. Now I know he deserves to be. Well, sister, I got, huh? Yes, I think so. Blackie, you said it was very convenient having two of us here. Well, I think it's very convenient having the two of you here. And this gun is very convenient, too. Put him up, both of you. Georgie. Georgie, did anyone ever tell you what happens to little boys who play with fire? Both of you stuck your noses into my business. June always did, and I'm used to that. And anyway, she's my sister, but I don't have to take it from you, Boston Blackie. Well, you have something there, Georgie, not to mention the gun. Uh, June, would you please leave the room? Uh, if I'm right in supposing what your charming brother intends to do with me, it, uh, well, it won't be very pretty. George, you wouldn't. Now, please, June, do as I say. But Blackie... Please, I... June. Oh, it's all my fault. I got you into this. I, I didn't know that... Oh, my own brother. Blackie! Oh, oh, Blackie, I, I thought... You know, June, for a man raised on a ranch, your brother isn't very quick on the trigger. Oh, I... Personally, I'm very glad because it gave me a chance to show him his mistake. Oh, Blackie, what did you do to George? Can I see him? Well, a little later, he, he's busy right now, you see... He's got a thousand pounds of steaks hanging in his wholesale plant, and he's looking for one little piece of beef to put on his eye. Yeah, Blackie, I guess I'll forget about you going back on your word. Ha <laughs> ha, good old inspector. <laughs> I had a pretty good reason, you know. Yeah, I know. Anyway... You broke up this black market ring, and I got the credit. Thanks. You know, sometimes I find it kind of hard to hate you. Well, keep trying, Inspector. You know, you're much prettier with a worried look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this kind of this thing kind of calls for a celebration, Blackie. Yeah. You and I break up a black market gang, and a million people can buy beef at reasonable prices. What do you think we ought to do? Well, let's see, Inspector. Um, how about coming up to the apartment for a home cooked steak dinner? Shall I bring anything? Yes. Points. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Boston Blackie will be back in just a moment with an interesting preview of next week's program. Meanwhile, let's see now. Uh, there are the dishes, the floors, the woodwork, the tiles, sink, windows. Hey, I could keep this up for hours. Listing the jobs at Rinso will make easier for you. Yes, those same soapy rich suds that are such a help when it comes to washing clothes are great for all the soap and water jobs around the house. So be sure to get Rinso tomorrow, ladies, for dishes, housework, and to keep you singing through wash day like this. Rinso white, Rinso white, happy little wash day song. Rinso white, Rinso white. Pretty thing it all day long. Your fine feather friend has a message to send, so listen, you can't go wrong. Rinso white, Rinso white, happy little wash day song. Yeah, Matthews, yeah, I know the guy's dead. You said that. Now listen, did you find the gun? Sure, we found it. It was hooked up inside the radio. When the guy turned the set on, it fired the gun. I get it. Hey. Hey, hey, was the telephone receiver off the hook? Sure, when we broke down the door... Hey, Inspector, how could you know that? Just so happens that's the way a guy was killed in a play I've been watching. Somebody lifted the idea, and I've got an idea who that somebody was. Yeah? Who, Inspector? The man who's backing this play, a fellow by the name of Boston Blackie. <laughs> Tough luck, ladies. I mean, about choice cuts of lamb going back on rationing. Means you've got to be smarter than ever at figuring ways to fix the meals your families want especially since you don't have as many points as you used to. Well, the smartest thing to do is to get extra points by turning in waste fats. You know, your meat dealer will give you cash and two red points for every pound you turn in. So get going. You'll be doing yourself a favor and your country an important service. For used fats are urgently needed for military medicines, armaments, and a host of things so necessary to win this war. Strain every drop into any tin can, no glass containers, please, and turn them in as soon as you have a pound. <laughs> Be sure to listen at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie on the screen at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Richard Lane appears as Inspector Faraday. Music by Charles Cornell. This is Harlow Wilcox saying goodnight for Boston Blackie, brought to you by the makers of Rinso, the soap that gets clothes. <laughs> And don't forget, tomorrow, when you ask your grocer for the new Rinso, buy a cake of Life Boy at the same time. Life Boy's rich, purifying lather goes right after dirt and perspiration, leaves you feeling extra clean. So use Life Boy daily in your bath or shower. Remember, it's the only soap especially made to stop... This is the National Broadcasting Company.